Hi everyone, welcome to our next book talk in this series where we are focusing on Pura Belpre Illustration Award winners um, and honorees. I am Nora Guzman, I am one of the Latinx in Kitlet uh, reviewers, as well as my partner here. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Sonia Alejandra Rodriguez, I'm also a, a book reviewer, contributor to the Latinx in Kitlet blog, and I'm also um, a professor, and I teach children's literature and write about children's literature. Awesome. Good to see you again. Hi. <laughs> hey, hey. All right. So today we are going to talk about Dreamers by Judy Morales. Um, in Spanish is Sonia Dores. This was the 2019 Pura Prey Illustration Award winner. Um, it's also won multiple awarded honorees. Um, one of them being the Charlotte Zoloto, which we've mentioned before, but then also the Tomas Rivera Mexican American Children's Book Award. Nice. I really love this book. I feel like I say this in every video. Like, this is such a great book. <laughs> These are such amazing illustrations, but it's true. I am such a fan of Yuyi Morales and her art and her words. Um, and this book really, really spoke to me. Oh, that's awesome. Same, same. I say, I think I, I'm right with there with you. I, I say it all the time. Like, I love this book. You need to read this book. But this is one of these, uh, like those types of books that you can just keep reading. And every single time there's something new. Um, and it just, it's, it's just good overall. Yeah. So um, we're it's a, oh, go ahead. I was about to say, like, it's, it's, it's a story about her own uh, immigration story, migration story. Right? It's, it's very autobiographical, which I think is also really important about this book. It's her telling her story of how she, uh, of her immigration story. It is, yeah. I, I think it was early 90s, um, where she mentioned in the author's note, early 90s when she came with her son. Yeah, a little baby. Um, and she crossed from Ciudad Juarez to El Paso, which is, so I'm from Ciudad Juarez, and our family's in El Paso. So when I read that, I was like, oh, snaps, me too, girl. And so another reason why I like this book and that sort of like immigration story and how she represents it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're gonna go over the, so the it won an award for an illustration, obviously, right? And um, I think I've mentioned before that, you know, I'm not an art major and when I look at illustrations, I'm like in awe of all these illustrations, but yeah. you did, what you did in this book was she actually wrote in the back here, she actually described her process, right, of how she made this book. Um, she talked about all the different materials she used that were very near and dear to her, right? So like important fabrics, um, memorabilia, um, I'm not sure quite like paper, right? So using every, any meaningful piece, right, to scan in and use within her illustrations. So I really appreciated that because it just added, you know, another layer, right, when reading and looking at this book. Yeah, definitely. I always appreciate the, like, the back material of children's literature um, because it, well, it provides more information sometimes, like, on the topic, but I also love reading, like, the author's notes, right, and they, like, like you did in this book, right, provided this, like, little note of, like, how I made this book, right, and to me it feels and it sounds very collage-like, right, a comb like, a mixed media, right? It's, it's paint, it's, I photographed something and then I put it into the place that I wanted it to and it's very like layered. I wanted texture, I wanted um, different colors, different senses, feels, right? And so I appreciate how she explains it and then how it's captured in the illustrations in the book. Yeah, it's very deliberate, right? Because it wasn't just any random material, which I think adds to her, this biographical account, right? This autobiographical account of just her journey, right, and her experiences and just what she was feeling. I think by her explaining, like, hey, I use this purposely, right, to connect it, I think it just brings it all together. Um, and then when you look at it again, right, after I read that, that author's note and I read it again, I'm like, oh, yes, I missed that part, right? I missed those um, where that could be that blanket. So we looked at... Were there a couple of illustrations that you love? Yeah, I think like maybe just like to add about like how the illustrations of the story go together. I was thinking about how much 
I feel like how much flack like immigration stories and I add like do air quotes immigration stories right have been getting just because that seems to like be the pigeonhole for like Latinx stories and like the larger like publishing industry right that like you have to write an immigration story right again in air quotes as if that isn't a current experience for like a lot of communities right not just Latinx communities but I think what I what I appreciate about the angle of the way that she told her immigration story um wasn't necessarily focused like on the trauma so much as um, the reality was we had to move and this journey was difficult but we found hope right there was light there was possibility and her illustrations do that they're so vibrant they're so um, bright and like off the page so it, so it doesn't feel like a very traumatizing dark down like scary story right and, and she does that very well you can see like the layers and just like the illustrations right there's layers upon layers in all of the pages it adds it connects it back to right like her why right her purpose of you know coming to a new space a new country right um and it's beyond, and I, I like how you use air quotes, because it's beyond like, oh, we came for a better life. Yes, like, you know, my, my parents did the same when I asked them. I'm like, hey, what did you, it's always for a better life, but, you know, for them and their future generations. But it, it, it's at a much, it adds depth to just, you know, for a better life. And it gives you that experience um, and those connections, too. I like from that picture that you just showed us, too, uh, the, um, the symbolism behind the monarch butterfly. Oh yeah. Because I know that, you know, there, there's, there's meaning behind the monarch butterfly and their great migration, right? Between countries as well, between the United States and um, Mexico. Oh yeah, the, the monarch butterfly is such a symbol of immigration, migration, right? Healing, death, life, and like Latinx communities and I'm sure in other communities as well. It's so significant. Yeah, yeah, and we see the butterfly, and I, I didn't count, I didn't love to see if every page has a butterfly, but when I flip through the book, like, every page that I see has the, the monarch butterfly, right? So, again, it's a very intentional symbol in the book. Yeah, and it, it comes with, um, and I don't know, again, if this was done purposely, but I always say that it is done, everything is done with a purpose, right? Um at the beginning of the page that you showed us, all the butterflies, right, are with her. But then throughout the whole page, with, throughout the whole book, it's just like one or two butterflies. So I want to say that that represents her and her son, right? While, you know, we have generations of, of families, right, and community members that immigrate, and, um, but we're still, you know, we might do it at different times, right? or different experiences, but we're all still connected, which I thought was also a great detail. Yeah, I agree. I think so much of like the importance of like the monarch butterfly is like a connection to, to immigration and migration is like the, the natural component of that, right? That nature is in, like immigration or migration is part of nature, right? And so right borders are constructed, they're made up, they're capitalist, they're violent state projects right and so I think she captures that in this book I mean it's not like a literal like like borders are like state violence but I think the butterflies are, are kind of doing that work right and she does it all in a children's book like this is a children's book right but it it's for many audiences and I love that you know throughout our classrooms um not only our bilingual classrooms and our dual language classrooms we use this text, right, as read-alouds, or writing mentor texts. Um, it's a very popular um, option for mentor texts, right, to kind of inspire students, right, and young readers and young writers to write their own stories, whether or not that's connected to immigration, but it's to tell their own stories, right, and to build, um, to build on that. Yeah, and that's so important. And then the narration, right, the story itself says there, right, that they found that even though moving was scary, right, immigrating was scary because they didn't know, well, the language or the customs and they got in trouble, right, sometimes, but that it was 
through the stories, right? Going to the library um, that they learned to speak, right? Or that they gained a voice. And we see that in, in the pages um, in the illustrations and in the moments when they're in the library, I find oh. so yeah, like endearing. Like, yeah. <laughs> I have, um, oh yeah, yeah, that's the one I was gonna, I was gonna show. I just, I, I love like how important like libraries are. Because I mean, it was so, it was such a significant part of my own life, right? Of growing up, like as an immigrant child, right? The library was like the place and it, right? And it continues to be. And Yugi captures that, like, that like homey feel of the library, that like adventurous sense, is that a word? Adventurous a sense of the library, um, right? That like possibility, hope of like the library so well in her illustrations. I'm just like, damn, this is. It's such a great like representation of what the library could be, right? When it's a supportive space. Yeah, I have great connections to even the library too, because not only because, you know, obviously we love books, but I think it's just also a space that's very welcoming, right? There's there's nobody really checking you in, you know, at least not in this <laughs> this book. And she even talks about in her author's note how, you know, the library, there was this particular librarian who just said, here's a library card, right? You can check out books. So it's it's that welcoming, inspiring place where, you know, you could really make it your own, right? There's so many different, not only books nowadays, but like technology and stories, resources, everything. Yeah, I was about to say, so like, it's such like, like the heart of a, of a community, right? And so if you have a good library, a good, like good librarians, right, it can really just, the impact, right, that can have on a child's life is probably a lot, right, it's like, it's, I can't even like put it into words, just how like impactful having a good librarian, a good librarian can have on people's lives. I think also what I like about those library scenes is like the detail on the books, mm -hmm. right, like you could, like easily just like I'm gonna make the little lines for the books, but <laughs> you you took the time to to these are actual books, right? And these are the actual covers of these books, right? So she has books like Gloria and Saldua's um, like Ghost Woman book is in here, uh, Margarita Engels the Poet Slave, right? Um, uh, Juan Felipe Herrera's Upside Down Boy. Sandra Cisneros' Woman Hollering Creek is in there, right? There's so many, yeah, so many, like, hidden, like, pockets of, like, finding other books, right? Which one of the reasons you would go to the library, right? I like this author. What else can I read? And so she is telling you, if you like this book, here are the books, right, that influenced me. Here are the books that, like, are in a similar conversation um, or in a different conversation, right, and that uh, you need to look. And so it's, like, rich with resources like this book in and of itself if you look at the illustrations yeah she lists them she lists them in the back as well she and it's so helpful so it's you know in case you missed it you're like here's another list of books so it's, again if you're looking at it to inspire right and and connect it to other literature that has been written or illustrated before then this is your go-to um but i think again it just brings it comes like full circle, right? Everything comes full circle where, you know, this whole notion of we're all connected. And I think a lot of our books have emphasized community, being part of a community. And even if it's just her and her son, right, at the very beginning, it's coming into a new community, right, and making those connections. And even within the library, right, there's a community within the library, within books, and authors and illustrators. So there's so many layers. Yeah, definitely. I can see. Um, and even just her, her work in like some of her other books, I feel like this this book in particular, Dreamers in particular, is, is, is different. And I think, I can't remember if her other books, her earlier works has like this many layers in terms of like, I took a photograph, I added texture, I had this like collage, like ensemble on, on these spreads. But I feel like this book, like the art or the illustrations, it was her like, let me just like try to capture my multifaceted 
complex experience of immigration with my art, right? So I was going to keep adding layers, right? Because it's not, it's not simple. And we both know that, right? And folks watching probably know this, right? Immigrating to a new country is not, let me just cross this bridge and I'm welcome to I be law. Right. And so even like uh, different stories. Yeah. But yeah. Connected in some way. Yeah. So I, I appreciate that about, about her work and about this story. Uh, she also talks about the word dreamers, right? It's, she, she uses it to like to dream, right? To have like the possibility, potential hope, right? To have dreams and to achieve dreams, but, but it's also like this akin to like um, the immigration movement in the United States of like dreamers, right? Of like youth who are undocumented, um, right? Who grew up in America and, and want to stay here and want citizenship, right? Like the whole movement. And so again, like you were saying, right? It ties not only the personal, right? But also like, like the political and like the community as well. So it's super important. Yeah, it adds more of that personal to what's become political, right? What you hear yeah. news and what you hear through policies, it gives it a more that humanistic approach. Be like, no, this is, you know, this is a story that can, re that resonates with a lot of dreamers as well. Yeah, and we continue to talk about like these super complex issues, right? And again, immigration is, is far super duper complex. But and you're like, how do I talk to children about this? How do I, right? Yes, right. And so again, always like recommend children's book all across ages, right? Because Dreamer is, is an example of this book that takes a very complicated topic and starts like adding layers um, and breaking down those layers and, and talking about the, how multifaceted, right, these topics are. And wrapped in this like very like beautiful story of like mother's son loving the library and loving each other. Yeah, yeah, and across generations and across countries, like you said, it's not just a Latinx experience, right? With immigration, there's many other countries and cultures, right? And just people in general that also immigrate and can connect. This is wonderful. Dora, thank you so much for, for doing this talk again with me um, and for another wonderful uh, book conversation as we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Pura Belpere Award. Next time. Bye.